everyone. I'm Dr. Pamela Combs and I'm the superintendent of the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services. And I am so excited to welcome you to our 2021 Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony and Aaron Ritchie Memorial Awards. Our vision as an agency is to create a community where people with developmental disabilities are valued and included and where they can live their lives without barriers and where they can thrive. In this broadcast, we recognize the accomplishments and contributions that people with developmental disabilities make every day in our community. And we will also celebrate those people who support them. These individuals are changing Montgomery County and the Dayton area for the better through their extraordinary talents and gifts. And we invite you to join us as we roll out the red carpet. Hi, I'm Madeline Isley, President of the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services, and I'm so happy to join you to celebrate the Board's 2021 Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame and Aaron Ritchie Award winners. The Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disabilities has been part of my family's life for more than half a century. My sister Alice receives services from the Board, services that have kept her safe and sound and enriched her life and that of our family in so many ways. The board's mission is to empower people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to live rich and rewarding lives based on their goals and choices. I'm thankful that we live in a community that supports and celebrates people with disabilities. I hope that the stories you hear will enliven and inspire you and remind you that we can all have a positive impact in this world. Hello, I'm Greg Darling. I'm the executive director of the Disability Foundation, and I'm also honored to serve as the manager of the Brighter Tomorrow Foundation. Founded in 1990 as a concept of the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services, Brighter Tomorrow was founded to benefit people living with developmental disabilities in Montgomery County through the distribution of grants to area nonprofit organizations. We're proud to say we have given $950,000 back into the community to these nonprofit organizations. We're very proud of that. Uh, we are proud to be a sponsor of this uh, event uh, and we're very, we want to congratulate the award winners, those uh, moving into the Hall of Fame induction and certainly the Aaron Ritchie Award. Thank you for uh, listening and we hope you have a wonderful event. We began the Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame as a way of recognizing and honoring people with developmental disabilities for who they were as citizens. These are people that have dignity and respect and abilities and they're here to share that with us as a community and after that first year there was no turning back. And it was so empowering for all of us that a few years after the Hall of Fame, and we saw the heroes that emerged from the Hall of Fame, we started looking at the people that were there beside them and behind them. And so we developed the Aaron Ritchie Memorial Awards. There was a, a wonderful little girl named Aaron Catherine Ritchie. And she was one of those pioneers. She was just a tiny little thing, beginning, ready to go to school. But she was a pioneer, like so many of the people with developmental disabilities have been. And she was on the cusp of going to a public school when her life was tragically lost. And we thought no better way to recognize the people, the mothers and the fathers and the advocates and the professionals, than to uh, to take all of the donations that had come in in her honor and establish the Aaron Ritchie Memorial Awards. Every year the excitement grows for the new person that's coming in. The same thing happens to them. It's that same feeling of becoming something that you always knew you were, but now people recognize it. And just try to stop them now. It's, it's been unleashed, this power to speak and to have a voice and to know who you are and to know that I'm as valued and as respected and needed and important as anybody else. 
Hi, I'm Montgomery County Commission President Judy Dodge, and I have my fellow commissioners right here with me, Debbie Lieberman and Carolyn Rice. We're here today to celebrate the accomplishments of those with developmental disabilities, and especially those who have supported them and helped them along the way. Those with developmental disabilities have done so much for us here in our community, and we couldn't be more honored to support them. Congratulations. Well, hi there, and welcome to the 33rd Annual Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame and the 32nd anniversary of the Aaron Ritchie Memorial Awards. I'm Nancy Wilson. I'm on the morning show on K99.1 FM. Now this is my fourth year serving as MC for this amazing event. I'm so happy that you could join us again as we roll out the red carpet to pay tribute to some remarkably accomplished individuals. The Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame is where we recognize people who have made exceptional contributions to advocacy, the arts, athletics, community service, employment, or who have through sustained personal accomplishments shown a light that is so bright that they show others how to dream bigger, work harder, and achieve more. These folks' contributions and achievements are deserving of red carpet recognition, and we want to celebrate them with you. So let's get down to business. We have six exceptional individuals to recognize, and what better way to honor them than by inducting them into the Montgomery County Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame. A close race in our 2021 Hall of Fame Advocacy Award category has led us to recognize two worthy nominees. The first of these is Brandon Kilgore. Brandon is a very independent man. One his nominator, service and support administrator, Joe Kramer, calls a straight up cool dude. Early in his adult life, Brandon suffered the loss of his mother, and this loss led him to begin advocating for himself. He became determined to leave the sheltered workshop environment and find employment in the community, working with Montgomery County Board of DD Employment Navigators and opportunities for Ohioans with disabilities staff to land a job at a retail store. Brandon loves his work, and Jill says his employers are very happy with his efforts. His commitment to self-advocacy extends to his activities and living arrangements. He lives in a house in the community with one other person, and his goal is to manage his time and his business himself with minimal help from others. He takes responsibility for scheduling his own appointments and transportation, and his can-do spirit can frequently be seen by his neighbors as he travels in his power chair to a nearby store to pick up items he needs. Brandon's advocacy also extends to helping others. Brandon is often asked by peers to help them find solutions to their problems and uses his connections to reach out to get them the help that they need. Jill notes that Brandon's example instills confidence among other people with disabilities. She says that many times his peers may not have the confidence to meet a friend without staff or family, but when Brandon suggests that they meet up for pizza or a movie, they join him and have a blast. This helps them gain skills and courage to do things independently. Brandon's involvement in self-advocacy includes regular participation in meetings and activities that are organized by the Montgomery County Board of DD's Voices Matters Self-Advocacy Group. He has participated in several interviews with the media on disability-related topics and was one of two people featured in a recent piece about the importance of accessibility on WRGT-TV. Thank you, Brandon, for being a great advocate and role model and congratulations on this special recognition. I have a cousin, he's nonverbal. He gave me the inspiration to start speaking up for individuals they can't speak. Self-advocacy and independence is tied in together. For me, I think if we speak up for ourselves, we can get more accomplished. Being independent makes me feel like I'm in control of what I'm doing. And I feel happy and excited about that. When I can go places and to take care of everything on my own. Being a person with a disability does not mean you have to put your life on hold. You have to progress and to see what you can come up with. I think with my staff's help and my job code's help and my SSA's help, 
I think I'm doing kind of awesome. Our second Advocacy Award goes to Teresa Sauter. Teresa is a founding member of Voices Matter, the self-advocacy group of the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and takes great pride in her advocacy efforts. But she wasn't always the confident advocate she is today. Being part of Voices Matter helped me believe in myself and realize that my voice and those of people with developmental disabilities deserves to be heard, she said. Teresa's involvement in self-advocacy led her to create and edit a blog that showcases the voices of people with developmental disabilities. She participated in planning efforts for the 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 self-advocacy conferences hosted by Voices Matter and the Voices of Greene County at Wright State University and served as a co-presenter at each. She's also given presentations about disability-related issues to high schoolers throughout the Miami Valley, to the Montgomery County Commission, and many other groups. Shy by nature, Teresa stepped way outside her comfort zone when she agreed to be one of five presenters in a session titled Adventure is for Everyone at Dayton's 2018 Adventure Summit. There she spoke about how people with disabilities can enjoy travels and adventures and advocated for more accommodations at parks and outdoor facilities. Teresa also participated in a Dayton Daily News interview about the impact the human services levy has on people in Montgomery County, sharing her story in a feature that focused on her experiences with the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Congratulations to you, Teresa, on your induction into the Hall of Fame. Advocacy is important for people with disabilities because it gives them a chance to speak up for themselves and realize that they're just as important as other people. It helps people live the life they want to live. When you advocate for yourself, it tells others that, hey, they, they want to be just like anybody else. I've also learned that advocacy is not just a one-person thing. It's a team effort. This group has really helped me become more of a risk taker. I would have never thought five, six years ago that I would be doing any of the stuff that I have done. I was just afraid of putting myself out there because I, I didn't believe um, people would like to hear what I had to say. I'm not afraid to speak up now. Self-advocacy also can open up other doors for people in becoming that person that they really do want to become. I've got big ideas for my future. Just don't be afraid to open up and realize that taking risks is a part of life and it just helps you become a better person, a better version of yourself. The next winner to receive the red carpet rollout is our 2021 Hall of Fame Arts Award winner, Cheryl Goodall. By all accounts, Cheryl is a creative soul. Her favorite mediums for art are painting and collage, and the joy she finds in creating her works would inspire anyone to pick up a brush. What might surprise you, though, is the fact that she did not begin creating art until adulthood, when she was introduced to it by a mentor named Ruthie, who ran the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disabilities Services Art Program. Ruthie helped Cheryl explore different forms of art and encouraged her to use lots of different materials, including found items like bottle caps, shells, tissue paper, and beads that she could recycle and incorporate into her pieces. Cheryl embraced this process, creating pieces that would be chosen for numerous exhibitions, including Accessible Expressions Ohio and Art and Soul the juried art exhibit that celebrates the talent of Ohio artists with developmental disabilities. She also won awards for her work, including second place overall in the 2017 exhibition for her collage piece titled Walmart. 
this piece became part of a traveling exhibition that toured different communities in Ohio. One of her greatest joys, however, is creating gifts for friends and family. She will ask about the kinds of things you like and then create a piece of art specifically for you. Cheryl was nominated by her friend, Letitia Martin, who sees her as an inspiration to others due to her creativity, talent, and spirit. Congratulations, Cheryl. Because I like to do art, I this too. That's one of my things. I just started to Ruby showed me how to do it. It made me feel good by myself. I never did art when I was a kid. All my family, they had never seen me do it. And they were really shocked. People give me stuff. I work with it. I can do cameras. And I thought you cardboard. So I thought you paint brushes. I use mud pot. I use something I use screw. I got a whole bunch of stuff to use. I made her a picture. She, she got in the office. And she asked me what my favorite color was. And I said, my favorite color's red. And then she asked my favorite holiday. I said, Christmas. And she said, well, I'm going to make you something. I love it. And it's one of my favorite pieces of art that I have in my office. I can figure out how I want to do it. I just speak my time. I enjoy doing artwork. Other people can be taught how to do art too. You can do anything when you put your mind to it. Our next red carpet recognition is the 2021 DD Hall of Fame Community Service Award presented to Brendan McCabe. Brendan was nominated by his service and support administrator, Mike Heitkamp, for his work at his church parish and for his helpful spirit. Brendan has volunteered for more than 20 years at Transfiguration Parish in West Milton, where his family is active. He started as an altar server in elementary school, and his experience with these ceremonial tasks has allowed him to teach many other children the ropes of this job ever since. He even serves alongside them as an adult when called upon to fill in by the church staff. Each year, he helps at the church's fish fry and fall festival, and also helps clean and prepare the church for all big holidays, including Easter and Christmas. He buffs the floors, and when church staff don't know how to use the cleaning equipment, they call him. A few years ago, one of his favorite people from the parish passed away, and their family wanted to hold a meal at the church after the funeral. Brandon decided he wanted to make sure that large multi-purpose room used for banquets was in good shape. He took it upon himself to strip and wax the floor of the room using skills he learned in previous employment. Mike says that Brendan has worked many years at a local Kroger store. As an adult each week, he joins a friend in gathering and delivering groceries to an elderly woman they both know. Brendan's honesty and service to others makes him the perfect recipient of the 2021 DD Hall of Fame Community Service Award. Congratulations, Brendan. Now we're serving mass. I've done that for 20 years. It feels peaceful and makes you feel good inside. I donate things to the church when I need it. I donated a um, high speed buffer. Yeah, when Kroger's was um, downgrading the shoe department, they had all these shoes for 90% off, and I got about seven or eight pairs, and I donated them to the Basquette Church. Thank you, Mike, for nominating me. Our last award is the DD Hall of Fame Award for Employment. And once again, we have two winners. The first is Thomas Acker. Tom's search for employment wasn't easy. After attending day services programs for many years, he decided he wanted a job in the community. He worked with his county board employment navigator, as well as staff from Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities and his provider, United Rehabilitation Services, to learn interview and job skills. Over the course of three years, Tom completed many applications and participated in many interviews. A few job opportunities fell through, but Tom's determination never wavered. Today, he is employed by Kettering Health Network as a part-time member of its janitorial staff and has worked at its Kettering Hospital facility for two and a half years. Amanda Walls, his employment navigator, says Tom takes his job very seriously and knows that he plays an important role in keeping people healthy and safe. His duties include cleaning and sanitizing patient rooms, staff lounges, and elevators. Tom worked through the COVID-19 pandemic 
and even overcame COVID himself, returning to work as soon as he was released. His contributions as an essential worker are appreciated by the staff of the hospital, including his supervisors. He enjoys his job and his positive attitude and dependability make him a great asset to the hospital. Congratulations, Tom, on this special recognition and welcome to the Hall of Fame. I went to Kettleman in May, and then I had an interview with a supervisor because they told me they need help during the weekend. This be my two years. I like it. It gave me something to do, not stay at home so much. I met a lot of friends. A lot of friendly people. I enjoy the people here, and I do my job. I clean patient wounds, then I clean at the lobby, then I clean up a patient nutrition room. He just started opening up after a few months and was like, well, hey, let me try this out for tonight. I was like, go ahead, Tom, let's see how you do. And he'd come back with great success, and. I know we've gotten several compliments of Tom whenever he's in the lobby helping people out, making sure all the tables and everything are wiped down for them and even the nurses stations and everybody in the surgery waiting is like, thanks so much Tom for coming in and doing that. So it's really a joy to hear those comments. He's always communicating with us on what he's going to do for the day and making sure that he's staying on task. Other businesses, if they're thinking about hiring someone with other disabilities, take the jump because Tom has been a great, great part of our team. Our second Hall of Fame Employment Award winner is Christopher Camp. According to Chris's nominator, Employment Service and Support Administrator Trudy Woods, Chris is a truly motivated person who sets a goal and works to make it happen. When his mother went to live in a nursing home, Chris decided that he wanted to work in the community. He didn't want just any job though. He wanted to work in a nursing home so he could help elderly people. Chris met over time with his job developer, Trudy, to learn what it took to work in this sort of environment. He gained employment skills and went on job-seeking missions, eventually landing an interview at Friendship Village, a senior living community in Dayton in 2016. Once there, he had to learn all the tasks that he had to perform. Some of the tasks, such as computer training and breaking down the dishwasher for cleaning at the end of the day, were difficult, but he persevered with Trudy's help. He now disassembles the machine, cleans it, and puts it back into operation mode in record-breaking time. Nearly five years later, Chris's eagerness and enthusiasm for work remains, and he is a valued member of the Friendship Village team. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you for your service to others and on your induction into the Hall of Fame. I work here at Friendship Village. I am a dietary who works in the kitchen and I do dishes I, and I put them away, break down the dish tank. I have to clean, sweep, mop, and it's important that I do my job because I care about the residents here. I care about their safety. I worked here for five years. I worked 40 hours because my mom was in a nursing home and I just love working in nursing homes. I bring the smile, cheer, laughter. It was like difficulty in working in the pandemic. I wanted to be here to just to make sure stuff gets done and make sure stuff gets put away and be on time and my job is really important. Just work really hard and get along with people and be nice, courtesy and, and just have a nice smile. I was kind of nervous about this, getting the award. I wanted to say to Amanda, thank you for working with me. Thank you for being there through the hard times I had. This wraps up our Hall of Fame inductions for 2021. It's been a joy to honor and celebrate our winners. Until next time, keep up the great work and be sure to join us when we return in 2022.
Hello, my name is Jeff Davis, Director of the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. I want to take a few moments to congratulate the winners for the annual Developmental Disabilities Hall of Fame and the Aaron Ritchie Awards. Those of you who are inducted and those of you who are receiving the Aaron Ritchie Award, I can't say enough for you. I hope it is a wonderful day for you because it is so well deserved. These awards are unique and they rec reflect the kind of merit and experience and expertise in giving that are uh, endemic to receiving something like this. Congratulations to you, congratulations, and for me, a personal gratitude. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ken Ritchie, former superintendent of the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services and also former director of the Ohio Department of Developmental Disability Services. For 32 years, my wife Nancy and I have given these awards in memory of our daughter Erin, who also had a developmental disability. Like most parents, we celebrated every milestone with her and were eager to see her reach her full potential. It makes us happy to celebrate with people with developmental disabilities who have made significant strides or accomplishments and to recognize those who have worked so hard to improve the quality of life of all individuals with developmental disabilities in the Dayton region. All the winners and the nominees deserve recognition and respect for their talents and for their personal and professional dedication to promoting acceptance and inclusion for all people. Like last year, this year we are doing the awards in a virtual program since we can't get together. We are joining you from our home in New Jersey. We are happy to celebrate with you and look forward to honoring you and people in the future as COVID becomes less of a concern. So with that, let's get started on this year's awards. Our Achievement Award is for a group of five adults with developmental disabilities who undertook a project that not only beautified the Northview Center of the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services, but in doing so, promoted inclusion for artists with disabilities. Let me introduce you to Carlton Kennedy, Kent Krubia, Caitlin Daugherty, Tyler Garrett, and Alicia Van Sill artists who participate in the Spire Arts program of I Am Boundless, a local provider of services to people with developmental disabilities. These five artists work together as a team to create a series of murals for Northview's outdoor courtyard and another mural for its entrance vestibule. The murals were funded in part by a grant from Culture Works and Montgomery County and offered the artists an opportunity to learn from a professional artist while expanding their talents and showing their art in a more public and permanent venue. Throughout 2021, the artists learned about the mural form of art, developing their ideas and planning with guidance from an artist in residence. The subject matter varied. One artist chose to paint a mural of water lilies. Another completed a colorful study of an eagle. A third painter illustrated a monster truck rally, while a fourth did a study of a Volkswagen bus. And the artists contributed to each other's individual projects and worked together on a fifth mural that depicts a neighborhood. For the sixth and final mural, they invited local artists, residents, and friends and staff to contribute to a piece of street art featuring the word community. Installation of the murals began in June and is now complete. Congratulations to these artists and their supporters for their superb contribution to the community. So I was asked to join on as the artistic consultant. I really saw myself as a guide for the artists. I really didn't want to tell them what to do because I've seen the art they make and I knew that whatever they came up with would be far better than any design that us and the administrators came up with. So I drew a picture of a building with a blank wall and then I had them all put their ideal street art design onto that wall. And then a lot of what they drew that day ended up on the walls. I wanted to show people my art, show them what I could do. 
Because I never really did it on a wall before. Like, really big. So, it was a great experience for me. I'm glad that they love it. I'm glad it makes, makes them happy. I like to do Meryl, uh, did the water lily, and Heli helped me out with it. It was a big challenge for me, but I took my time with it. I want to say I'm so proud of the R Meryl. I'm so proud of everybody who does this job. I think a lot of people in the community have preconceived notions about what art by people with developmental disabilities can look like, but the truth is is that the art that they make is just as valid and just as uh, beautiful to look at as any other artist. I'm hoping that like local business owners or other people who are in charge of properties like this one see this mural and are inspired and have that assurance of, well, look at this really cool final product that is going to be long lasting and beautiful to look at for years to come. Our next award is the 2021 Business Award. This is being presented to CW Resources. Nominator Trudy Wood says the company has been an awesome employer to people with disabilities since arriving in the region in the summer of 2016. CW Resources believes that everyone has the ability to work and provides them with employment opportunities that are more than just minimal work experiences. These opportunities provide them an ability to learn, enhance their skills, and contribute to their communities. CW Resources came to Dayton looking for workers to fulfill a janitorial contract with Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Since that time, they provided employment for more than 30 individuals at starting wages of more than $14 per hour. Woods says, if you ask any one of the crew members, they will tell you that CW Resources is a great place to work. Her observation is, they create a win-win working environment for the people they employ that enhances their lives. They offer opportunities to be productive, contributing citizens, and they support their staff and they show their appreciation with work parties and gifts. Thank you, CW Resources, for encouraging people with developmental disabilities and recognizing their value. Congratulations on your award and your recognition. So the mission started probably in the 50s. Our owner and president, Ron Bocelli, established it. It was a workshop uh, like most in the industry. He got an opportunity to convert it somewhere in the 80s. We were awarded a contract at the Coast Guard uh, and it took off from there to where we could take good folks out of these uh, workshop programs and actually integrate them into uh, employment. Overall, I have 54 employees. 35 of those are of our participant class. They're very reliable, uh, very respectful. All they gear themselves to do is please you and, and perform the tasks. I think we're just beginning to realize what an excellent resource uh, for both, for both parties. For It's rewarding for us as much as it is for them. And with COVID uh, coming upon us and kind of inundating us with extra work, the good staff that I have here, we've been able to uh, maintain our buildings, keep them clean, keep everyone safe, very at the ready. They embraced all of those challenges that came. I asked them to uh, different procedures like wearing masks and gloves and extra precautions, and they listened to the T. We were all janitorial people were considered essential. It's probably the single greatest thing that I've ever come in contact with. I've been unit business director in other areas, and this is not a step back at all. This actually was a step up for me. They taught me as much as I taught them. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. The next award is the 2021 Carl Day Volunteer Service Award given in memory of our friend who was a longtime newscaster at WDTN-TV and host for these awards for many, many years. This year, we are proud to recognize Asia Payne, a fourth-year medical student at Wright State University. For the last three years, Asia worked to connect the self-advocacy groups of the Montgomery and Greene County boards with Wright State University medical students. Her goals 
to help those future healthcare providers better understand the needs of people with developmental disabilities and to create more inclusive and accessible environments for them. Asia worked with representatives of the advocacy groups several times to schedule opportunities for them to speak with her medical student peers and cover topics related to disability awareness, including their experiences navigating the healthcare system and discussions of what they need from healthcare providers. Asia was inspired to pursue medicine by her sister who has cerebral palsy. She explained that growing up, she had lots of questions about her sister's situation and wanted to understand how she managed to surpass the expectations and prognosis of her physicians. When she learned about neurology, she realized that it was a segment of the field that attempted to answer those questions. I came across Voices Matter in the group and I was just like amazed that at their mission and that, you know, they empowered individuals with disabilities to become self-advocates. I was able to sit in into one of their meetings and it just from there took off. I've always been really passionate for helping or even just being a part of a community of individuals with disabilities. My sister actually has cerebral palsy and I always knew that I had an inside look into their lives as well as their families' lives. And I knew that everybody doesn't have that experience. My experiences with my sister um, really inspired me to make sure that my classmates understood the experiences of individuals with disabilities. Not only the experience of, of the caretakers, the family members, but also the individuals who have the disability and what they need from us as healthcare providers. I mainly wanted to elevate the self-advocates' voices. I took a step back during the entire uh, presentation and allowed them to lead the discussion as well as share their experiences with my classmates and also have my classmates ask their questions on how they could better impact their future patients. Asia will graduate from medical school in May of 2022. Her goal, to become the best child neurologist I can be. Thank you, Asa, for giving people with developmental disabilities the opportunity to speak to future healthcare providers about how to improve healthcare outcomes for people with developmental disabilities. Our next award is the 2021 Community Award. Now it's time to recognize Nathan Owens of the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority, known as RTA. Nathan has been a business development specialist for RTA for 13 and a half years. And during his time with the organization, he became the go-to person for the Montgomery County Board's summer camp for middle and high school students with developmental disabilities. Nathan teaches the students how to travel independently using public transit. He helps them understand how to use the RTA app to access bus schedules and stop locations and walks them through how to pay for their fares. He answers their questions, sets up bus tours, and organizes travel training trips so they can learn to navigate the community on their own using the RTA buses. He also works with high schools throughout the region to provide the same training to their students. Another important role he plays is facilitator for the organization's community advisory group. This group meets on a quarterly basis with people from around the community to discuss how to improve and enhance RTA services and transportation services in general. Here, Nathan works with different agencies to advocate for people who use RTA and its paratransit connect service. Nathan advocates for individuals with developmental disabilities and gives 100% for all the people in the Dayton area, says his nominator, Montgomery County Board School to Work Employment Specialist, Andrea Harker. Congratulations, Nathan, for your work in advocating for people with developmental disabilities. With my job responsibilities, I'm really out in the community, and that's whether I'm working with area schools, uh, human social service agencies, and I get out there and I, and I talk to individuals about 
how they can utilize transportation to get around, or I teach them how to use the services as a travel training program. I can really show them that it's, it's easy to do, that it's something that you don't have to be afraid of, and that it's gonna open up a lot of doors for them, that they can get out to a new part of town to go you know, to the grocery store or to get that job that they've been wanting to get, and it's gonna give them a real sense of independence and, and freedom. And then we actually go out and ride the bus together. So some of them, that's their first time on the bus. So it's, it, I like that because when they get out on the bus for the first time on their own, the, they've already done it with their peers, with me. So it, it kind of takes that anxiety off them a little bit. Public transit is really important because it gives people access to jobs, to medical appointments, to grocery shopping. It's, it's a real lifeline to the community. And, and I like working at RTA because of that. And for people with disabilities, to be able to utilize public transit to get out there and to have that sense of independence is just very important. Our next award is the 2021 Direct Support Professional Award. This year's winner is April Underwood, a home manager with Toward Independence. April has worked in the field of developmental disabilities for seven years. Her nominator, Michael Hall, is a resident in the home she manages for him and his fellow housemates. Michael says of April, she made me feel happy when she came to Toward Independence. She is a caring staff to me and my housemates and a good home manager. She makes our lives better. If I'm down, she will come talk to me and she does that for the people I live with too. I feel like she is straight with us and that's really important. Michael relates that April has taught him how to cook and is even helping the housemates make their back porch into an outdoor activity area. Mark Schlater, the CEO of Toward Independence, says April has made the home a very warm and inviting place. Michael says April's support goes well beyond her positive attitude though. He appreciates that she takes him and his housemates places that they'd like to go, from the store to Bengals practices at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. When Michael was featured on a series of billboards about essential workers with developmental disabilities, April took him to see those billboards. She also brought him into an interview with a local TV station so he could represent people with developmental disabilities on the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Mark says, the fact that one of the individuals nominated her for this award says a lot about how much they appreciate her. And during the pandemic, she will also fill in for staffing at other homes when staff could not make it. She is such a great DSP and we are so appreciative of her efforts. Congratulations, April. So a home manager does all kinds of roles does anywhere from cooking to shopping to finances. And then part of our job is to help them to be as independent as possible, you know, how to cook and to clean and whatever their needs is, because they rely on you. I'm taking them to their doctor's appointments or to see their loved ones or just to get out of the house to get air, you know, they rely on you for that. They, they keep you hopping. <laughs> They're really entertaining and they're all different. They all have their own personalities, their own spirit. They make me happy, they make me whole. My relationship with them is wonderful. They, they call me mom, <laughs> all of them do. Um, they call me on my day off. The work of direct support professionals is important with us. You know, they have lives and can do things and whatever they want to do. We try to make it, you know, possible for them to do. The clients put a big impact on your life. I love going to work every day. I miss them when I'm not with them. <laughs> the next category is the 2021 Educator Award. This year, we'd like to present that award to educator Rebecca Sledge. Becky is an intervention specialist at Oakwood High School, where she teaches students with multiple disabilities. After 18 years of teaching, Becky still loves her work and that enthusiasm shines through when you talk to her. 
It's clear that she believes in the value of every person and her goal is to help her students grow academically while developing employment and life skills that will help them into adulthood. Becky believes that it's important for students to understand what life is like outside of school. One of her greatest joys involves finding volunteer opportunities for her students so they can learn the satisfaction of work. To do this, she helps students develop work and interpersonal skills and prepare for the project search program that focuses on helping people with significant disabilities find success in competitive employment. Her class volunteers at many locations in the community, including a clothing retailer, Chico's, and a nearby daycare program. One of Becky's greatest strengths, however, is in bringing people together. She makes sure that all agencies are involved with students and includes everyone at the IEP meetings to make sure that the students and their families are familiar with what is going on and what services are available for them. As a result, her families also hold her in high regard. Thank you, Becky, for your service to the children of our community. Grew up in a small school in Northwest Ohio, and I was fortunate to be able to be a classroom aide, student helper in the resource rooms with the special needs students. This probably started my passion for working with special needs. Our curriculum is academic in the morning and we work on academic skills. In the afternoon, we work on daily living skills and vocational skills. So we get our students out into the community and learning some soft skills. And that probably is the area where I'm most passionate. I love seeing the students out in the community, thriving, interacting with others. So that's probably my biggest drive and my biggest passion is seeing them excel and that they are going to excel once they graduate from high school. We are very fortunate to live and work in this community of Oakwood. We have so many amazing businesses that want to partner together with us. We are working currently with Dorothy Lane Market, Chico's, Ashley's Pastry Shop, Lula Bell, just so many. I could go on and on of people in the community that want to give back and want to include our students as well. These students deserve to be a part of the classroom, the everyday life, just like all the rest of us. They have dreams and goals and they can do and will show you what they can do. I've always said that the students, I learn more from the students than they learn from me. Our 2021 Aaron's Award winner is Gary and Melody Abfalter. Melanie and Gary have dedicated their lives to being foster parents to children with developmental disabilities. They have nurtured more than 100 children in the past 45 years, in addition to raising seven of their own. As they fostered, they found that, that their unique calling was in helping medically fragile children, infants, and toddlers who are often the most difficult to place. And Melanie decided to go back and get her degree, and her nursing degree, so that she could take care of special needs children and understand all the medical terms and everything. I think what drove us mostly into foster care is our son that we adopted. and He had never been held as, as a foster child. And when we got him at five months, he still could never be held. And that just left an, a message in our heart that this shouldn't happen to any child. And we knew that we could do better than that. Maddie Callahan, a developmental specialist with the Montgomery County Board, says that the care Melanie and Gary provide these children has helped them thrive and reach developmental milestones. And she further says, they see the potential in every child and give them everything they need to grow and develop while demonstrating love and affection that enhances their lives. This includes the time, the care, the equipment, and ongoing therapies they need to maximize the strengths of each child. If they just become one of your own kids, the things they accomplish give you such feedback and rewards that you yeah. just can't get that from the kids that don't have special needs. But the special needs kids are so aware of love and it helps them develop and attain whatever milestones they're going to be able to maintain or achieve. Even in retirement, Gary and Melanie continue to selflessly provide a safe, loving environment for children while advocating for the best treatment, care plans, and adoptive families for each child to be fostered out. These are just our kids and we love them and we can't wait for them to find forever parents but we can still love them. And that's what we want to do 
as long as we can. Thank you, Gary and Melanie, for going above and beyond to help the most vulnerable children in our community and for embodying the spirit of the Aaron Ritchie Awards. We salute you. The Spirit Award for 2021 recognizes excellence among administrative, management, or supervisory staff in the field of developmental disabilities. This year, we have two recipients. The first is Heather Reeder, a program manager for Toward Independence Montgomery County Day Services Program. Heather has worked for Toward Independence since 2015. She loves helping people with developmental disabilities learn and grow. Her nominator, Service and Support Administrator Bobby Lakes, says that Heather's work ethic is amazing and that she raises a standard wherever she is, whether it be in day programming or working in direct care. Throughout the COVID-19 shutdown, Heather supported her co-workers by picking up shifts and asking her staff to help with a shortage in toward independence group homes. She did this despite the fact that she is also the mother of five whom she homeschools. Each day, when the individuals who attend toward independence day program arrive, they do so eagerly looking for her because she lifts their spirits and builds their morale and the morale of those around them. Heather always has a positive attitude and looks forward to creating opportunities for all the clients that, that are attending our Creative Community Connections Day Hub program, designing the programs and activities based on the needs of everyone in the room. She always ensures that they are out and about in the community and cares about and respects every person, said her Toward Independent CEO, Mark Schlater. Bobby says, Heather's morale, work ethic, and attitude represent the example we all want of our providers and caregivers to aspire to. If you get a chance to meet her, your day will be instantly better. She is a true joy. Congratulations to Heather on being this year's winner. I always loved reaching out and helping people and making them feel like they are important. They rely on, a, on us staff, but we actually look forward to seeing them every day. We ask the person themselves, what would you like to accomplish? And then we help them to do that. They leave feeling like they had a purpose today. That means something to me. My, my fulfillment would have to be just knowing that I made their day, but I know that I have something to look forward to in the mornings. They're fantastic people. Montgomery County Recreation Manager Kathy Duffin was nominated by a team of people who have the greatest insight into her work, the people she manages and supervises. Tammy Brooks, who works as a recreational assistant for the board, says, I feel like all of us look to Kathy as an example. She leads us with her compassion and works tirelessly on everything from A to Z. She is kind, thoughtful, and fun to be around. When the going gets tough, she gets everyone's spirits up. She even direct the traffic in the snow and rain at our, one of our vaccination clinics and always had a smile. Chelsea Veets, another recreation assistant, says, Kathy has been the absolute best supervisor and team player in recreation. She leads by example and is always right there with us, regardless of the activity or how many hours she has already put into the week. She changes her plans at a moment's notice when we have staff call off and shows up with a smile for whatever the activity is. Her ability to smile and have fun is one of the things I admire most about Kathy. We are extremely grateful to have such an awesome lady leading our team. Mitch Snyder, her supervisor says, when COVID hit, we had to shift from our typical in-person program to becoming all virtual. Kathy took on the challenge without missing a beat. She jumped in and started mailings, deliveries, and Zoom. The program kept people engaged and gave them a positive experience and hope during a troubling time. Congratulations, Kathy, for your work in this field. Oh, the, my philosophy for recreation is, first and foremost, I think recreation needs to be fun, 
we offer lots and lots of activities so that people have things to pick from. People have different interests, different likes. Hopefully we can touch everybody. We love to be out in the community. The community offers a lot of things that we can take part in. And I think it's good for them to meet people in the community. And it's nice to have different role models, different people that exposes them to different ideas, different ways of thinking, different ways of doing things. And I, I think that's refreshing. The whole rec team is awesome. I can't say enough about them. Their ideas, their willingness to do things, their enthusiasm, their excitement that they bring. Like it can't be topped, they're super. Places we should visit, things we should do. So it's a huge collaboration between all of us and we all do it to enrich the individual's lives and make their lives enjoyable for them. And like our new favorite quote here at Recreation is, we're always on vacation because we love our occupation. That kind of sums it up. <laughs> this wraps up this year's Aaron Ritchie Memorial Awards. We'd like to thank you for tuning in and helping us celebrate this year's winners. We encourage you to think about the people you know who are out there doing great things that improve the quality of life for people with developmental disabilities and do so by nominating them for our 2022 awards. For more information about nominating people or an organization, contact the Montgomery County Board of Developmental Disability Services Communications Department at one word community relations at mcbdds.org and Please continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and observe social distancing so you and those you care about can stay safe and healthy. And hopefully we can be there in person to congratulate you. Thank you for joining us in celebrating these remarkable people and for supporting our DD Hall of Fame and Aaron Ritchie Memorial Awards. This event and our services here in Montgomery County are funded largely in part through the county's shared human services levy. We thank our county leaders, the taxpayers, and all of those involved who make our wonderful system of supports for people with developmental disabilities in Montgomery County possible. Until we see you again, be safe, wash your hands, and take care.